Esprit is known for its powerful tool control and quick toolpath generation. The ability to create NC code programs upstream of the real machine, which mimic a production-ready, hand-optimized program, is Esprit's strong point. Okay, so let's create our first operations on this part. We have some features, and I'm going to drill out this ID area first, so this is the feature that I'm going to want to select. And here we can see under the, the properties, we have a machining section and this has a little plus sign next to it. So you can click on that plus sign and expand any of these areas to uh, view some additional information. And here we can see the depth is 1.25. So I know that this feature has that depth and that's what I want to machine to. So we're going to come over here to our uh, milling and turning commands and we're going to go to the turning tab first. So here we have a drilling icon and we see the tool tip pop up just like all of the other icons. And when I click on that, it's going to bring up my operation page. So the first tab second tab and third tab here on the left these are basically uh, very similar from all of the operations so every operation that you choose the first tab here on the left is going to be general and you're going to have an operation name so we're going to type in center hole uh, we're going to pick a tool this uh, for me i'm going to do a three-quarter uh, drill if you're doing something similar you can pick the tool that you made uh, the control point uh, here for speeds and feeds, you know, it's just a tutorial, don't really care. So we're going to put in some values and then update stock and use previous stock. What do these mean? Again, you could go to the help, the F1, to view any of this stuff in more detail. This is here on this icon. Uh, but I'm just going to give a quick explanation to some of the, you know, main commands here. Update stock means do I want to update the stock after I'm done with the machining and use previous stock. So since this is our first operation on this part, we don't have a previous stock except for our bar. So this doesn't really matter, uh, but you can utilize or not utilize the previous stock if you want to use stock automation to trim any unnecessary air cutting or things like that. Very helpful for like open pockets or things like that that you're doing milling. Uh, machining order. Uh, we're not going to worry about any of this other stuff. I'm just going to go to the whole tab here. And do I want the depth from feature? Yes or no. If I say no, I have a total depth function here that I can control. If I say yes, it's going to use that inch and a quarter that we saw underneath the properties down here. Starting depth. Do I have a starting depth? So depth, if I dive into a pool and it's five feet deep, that's a positive five feet of depth. If I want this tool to start above the face of my part, remember I have, I think, 50 thousandths of extra stock, I could come in here and put a negative 0.1. So it's going to start above, and you'll see actually my tool shift backwards uh, 100 thousandths. So um, you can use this to control how far above you want to control that. So remember, we do have stock automation set, so it's going to try to uh, adapt for some of these things for me anyway. So do I have a through depth? Uh, if I want to go ahead and put that in there, I can do that here. Uh, drilling with chip removal. So we've got a lot of different um, functions that you can use. So if I just want to go straight in, I can go straight in with a drilling. Or again, underneath the help, I would suggest just going to the help and viewing the more detailed information about our different cycle types. So the can cycle, yes or no. If the post has that supported, which typically most of them are going to have that, you can get a can cycle for your drilling by setting this to yes. Entry distance, entry feed rate. Do I want an entry feed rate different than my feed rate for the operation? Do I want to uh, control anything about my links here? I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. And that is going to produce our first operation on this part. So now to simulate, let's take a look at that. We're going to come here and switch to our machine view. And you can see that the tool is there, the part is there, and I'm going to come to my simulation tab. 
So here it's kind of like a, a DVD player. You know, you got your play, you got your step. If I just want to go step by step or go to the next operation or next tool change, these are how I can control the speed of the simulation. So when I say play, if I go really fast, it goes really fast. I'm going to do that again. If I slow this down, we see the tool is moving very slowly into the part. So you can control how quickly or how slowly this is going to execute on the screen. So also, this is a good time to talk about uh, the part view or operations uh, view versus the machine view and the program list here. So um, when you have, depending on how you have your screen set up, I have mine set up where the operation list is hidden when I'm in my machine view. So this switches to program. You can see program view there and operation view there. You could have both open at the same time. It doesn't really matter. But um, there's a difference between the two. For a lathe part, you typically are going to only have one part in the lathe. So, but this is really important for milling. So I'm not going to talk about this in detail right now. Uh, but you can have multiple parts set up on different fixtures. And here under the machine view, it will show you all of the different um, operations. So for example, on a mill, if you had, let's just say you were going to face off and then pocket and then drill a part. So you've got three operations, facing, pocketing, and drilling. If you set up eight of those parts on a horizontal, in this view, you would see three operations for your part. You would see a facing, you would see a pocketing, and then a drilling. But when you look at the program view, you would see eight facing operations, and then eight pocketing operations, and then eight drilling operations. So that is the difference. We'll get into it more on a different tutorial. Uh, but for right now, uh, we can see that the program view has a link before the operation, and then the operation, and then a link after the operation. And the first thing in the list is our effectively tool change. So depending on where you start the simulation, so I'm going to go ahead and select just at the top or have nothing selected, and that's going to start with my turret indexing and moving into position and coming to that first clearance value and then drilling straight down into the part to the full depth of inch and a quarter and then coming back up. So we can start at the beginning of the operation and if I do single step, you'll see my tool will begin at the start of the operation itself. So I skip the link move in simulation. Also, if I pick the final link, I can start that and you'll see that we move out of the hole. It's already machined. You can see that the stock has been removed. So depending on however many operations you have, wherever you want to start, you can control that here inside of the program list. So I'm going to go ahead and hit stop and come back to this view and then we can look at our features and program some additional features for machining. Okay, so let's create another operation here. We will go to this front ID contour and we can see this in a clear mode here at the front of the part on the inside ID. So again, front, front half, ID, that's on the inside, and then contour means that we're looking for a chain so um, we're going to come here and turn this down with a boring bar. So I already have the feature selected. I'm going to come to turning and I can do either a contour, which would be a single pass, or I can do a roughing operation, which is going to be a multi lap cycle type pass. So I'll pick that uh, roughing operation icon and we're going to come to the general tab, ID boring bar. We're going to select our uh, a boring bar that you know you have on your machine ID rough 10 millimeter and then put in some speeds and feeds um, it's reading the reference diameter from the feature um, constant surface or RPM whatever you want to do there per rev per minute inverse time is listed here so we're gonna go to uh, strategy and do we want to finish pass embedded within the same operation? So I can rough this down and then create a finish pass. So if I'm not going to like do a spring finish pass after I've done some other operations to deburr the part, 
uh, which is very common on the OD, I can set this to yes, and then you can see a new tab appear. So you'll see that tab disappear when I go back to no. It's no longer there. So if you do set that to yes, you'll get the uh, parameters for a finish pass to do an additional cut. We're just going to leave that. Uh, start and end extension. You can go into more depth in the help on this. This basically will virtually extend or shorten the feature. So here's our start point and here's our end point. If I don't want to cut all the way to the end, I can stop short of that by putting in a value here. Undercutting mode allows the tool to dip into certain areas or not. Uh, roughing. This is uh, automation for the type of roughing. We can set a diameter. Automation is the best here because it's already been calculated by Esprit and I don't need to worry about anything. The center has already been drilled out so it's going to find for me what that value is even though in my head I know I used a three-quarter drill. And then uh, rough stock, we've got this at 3,000 on each uh, parallel so we can choose the type of machining that we want. Again, you can learn more on the help and stuff. Depth of variation. We're just going to go with the standard constant depth. Constant depth, we'll make this like maybe 30 thousandths. Um, clearance, depth clearance, etc. We'll leave all that alone. I'll say OK. And Esprit will create that operation for me at the ID. And now I'm in clear view so I can see that operation. Now I could see here that uh, with this tool, I might want to change my drilling tool so that it's a 180 degree drill. So if I want to come in here and do that, well, let's look at what uh, the simulation looks like before we do that. So sure enough, before I even simulate, Esprit is telling me that there is a collision. So what I can do here, and I'm pretty sure that's due to the tool giant geometry, uh, what I want to do in here is just actually change this to 180 degrees on that drill and these will automatically rebuild and there you go. It automatically knew that we're okay and now if I want to simulate starting at that link I come to the simulation toolbar and click on step and it starts my simulation from this position. So my boring bar can come down and it can start doing its cutting, you know, doing its lap cycle. I'll let it go here. And again, we can speed up the simulation or we can slow it down to a very slow crawl, depending on how quickly you want everything to execute. We see the stock spinning, the collet chuck spinning. Everything is behaving as it would on the machine. So that covers some basic programming on this part, starting with some simple turning operations. This is the basic flow in a spree for any part, whether it is a milling part or a turning part. CAD to feature to operation, easy as one, two, three. Remember, you have the F1 help to go into the details on any questions you might have. Also, we can see some of the power of a spree's machine awareness, indicating program issues prior to even simulating. This is really nice. A spree can now communicate back and forth with the simulation and in the machine view, making your programming experience easier and more flexible. This is gonna be the future.